Hi, I'm Professor Ted Pettis. We are looking at a human skull, and our goal is to understand the course of the internal carotid artery and how it access, accesses the cranial cavity. We'll find that it has a very tortuous route, and it is hard to discern the entire route just looking in your Netter Atlas. That said, I advise everyone to turn to their Netter Atlas and look at the current edition, it would be pages 10 and 11, I believe, so you can see all the framing of the skull. In one page, you see them from the inferior aspect and one from inside the cranial cavity. So, when you look in your Netter Atlas, I believe it tells you, points to right here, as for where we would begin to see the internal carotid artery in the cranial cavity. And this is, in fact, where the internal carotid artery appears in the cranial cavity. Now, I'd like to turn to the inferior side to show the long, tortuous route that it takes. It does not just come straight up through this hole. We're going to find that the opening on the inferior side is going to be deep to right about here, deep to the middle ear cavity. So I'm going to put this red pipe cleaner through the skull, and we'll look at it on the inferior side. So we can see the red pipe cleaner appearing. And if I pull it out, you will see in your Netter Atlas that this is actually the foramen lacerum. Now when you read up on this, you'll see that the foramen lacerum is not responsible for transmitting anything through it. In a live person, the foramen lacerum is actually covered by a membrane, so we do not see arteries running through that. The internal carotid artery actually enters the carotid canal right here, just medial to the styloid process, which would be right here. The internal carotid canal, we have a foramen, and then the canal runs anteromedially in a tunnel of bone. You can see where it appears just on the opposite side of the foramen lacerum. So you can follow the direction somewhat from this mastoid process, the vectors from the mastoid process over toward the nasopharynx or this pterygoid plate here, very similar to the course we went into so extensively on the pharyngotympanic tube. I'm going to rotate back to the inside of the cranial cavity where we can pick up on the internal carotid artery as it appears in the cranial cavity. Now you can see it doesn't just enter and then supply the brain. It actually takes an anterior turn through the cavernous sinus overshoots its destination. So here we go. Arising from the area where we would see the foramen lacerum, but it does not traverse the foramen lacerum. It goes across it, not through it. And then we can see an anterior turn. This is moving up toward here, the superior orbital fissure. We go a little too far under the clinoid process, take almost a 180 degree turn, and then move superiorly to then appear in the cranial cavity just posterior to the optic canal. So this is occurring right next to the optic nerve, really right next to the optic chiasm, which we would find right here, and the pituitary gland, which we would find right here. All of this turning in the cranial cavity up to this point, where it appears superior to the clinoid process, all that occurs in the cavernous sinus, a dural venous sinus, formed lateral to the pituitary gland by the dura mater. At this point, the internal carotid artery actually branches into the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery.